What do you do when you're running a benchmark and you're waiting for it to finish and it's not fun and all that kind of stuff's going on? What else? You play around with the ASUS AI suite on your other computer and try out the auto overclocking. Hello everybody and welcome to a very echoey tech uploaded. I'm Chris as always and as I said, uh, this monitor over here and this whole area is kind of dominated right now with the benchmarks for the AMD and Intel budget gaming builds. So I thought, I got some time. Why not try out that ASUS auto overclock that uh, is supposed to be so special and intelligent and has all those features and stuff built in that JJ talks about all the time. I haven't done that in a while actually. Last time I did it was on a Z77 board. So I've got a 4790K and I've got a Z97 workstation. So what the heck, why not? So here I am in the Dual Intelligent Processors 5 interface in the AI suite on my Z97WS. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on five-way optimization and hit advanced settings. And then here's all of this. So it defaults to extreme tuning, uh, ratio only, and then uh, per core. So you know what, let's just leave everything on the default. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's see, fan, do I wanna do fan? Yeah, why not? Let's let it go. So now obviously the computer's restarting, so it's going to uh, do a quick reboot and then go in and do its thing with the auto tuning. Now you'll notice I didn't change anything. I just clicked in there and it was defaulted to extreme. I've got a really big ass CPU cooler on here, so I'm not too worried about it. So we're just gonna see what it does and see how far the chip goes. Now supposedly, you can hear the fans really spinning up there. Man, those fans get loud when this thing boots up. They get very quiet afterwards. But right now the system's kind of going through and doing the fan tuning. I can, I can hear the fans revving and doing different things. But what it's gonna do with the, the auto overclock is it's gonna go through and it's gonna test the CPU and it's just gonna keep slowly inching up the actual ratio for each of the independent cores until they reach a point of instability. And the idea of it is, you know, if you don't wanna go into your UEFI and you don't wanna mess around with things and, and really, get down and dirty in your overclock. This is the uh, poor simple man's way, I guess, of doing it. So we'll see what it gets. Uh, right now, I mean, I'm very happy with the performance of my 4790K as it stands now. So even if it just overclocks a little bit, you know, I'm not really gonna be too hurt about it. But we're back on the desktop now, so it should reopen the application. So what it's doing here is it's uh, got this really dramatic countdown. I'm not really sure why. Uh, one minute seems like a long time to give you to panic and back out of this if you want to, but uh, yeah, so we just wait for this to count down and uh, it looks like right now it's got me at 4.6. So it's a 9% increase. Uh, I believe I was at 4.4 before. Oh man, five, four, three, two, one. Hopefully my system doesn't blow up. All right, so here's what it's gonna do. It's gonna start Wow, those fans are loud. It's going to uh, do a full core stress test, which uh, apparently the motherboard's default action for that is 100% on all the fans because the PPC fan is going uh, full blast right now. You can probably hear it. So it did that, and what it's gonna do is now it's gonna bump everything up if it passes that test, and it's probably gonna attempt to do 4.7. Depending on you know how well your chip was bent and the silicon lottery and all that, you may get different you know results from this test. Now with my 4770K chips, I never got really very good results out of, out of the auto overclock. Uh, I wanna say I got maybe, maybe 4.3, I think is what I got up to with my 4770K. So, you know, we'll see what this does, but you know, if it passes 4.7, I'm happy with that. So it's gonna do the full test at 4.7. All right, so there it did 4.7, so now it's attempting to do 4.8. And before everybody gives me a bunch of grief about doing it this way, I'm just demonstrating that this is an option that you have and trying to show if you don't wanna put any effort into doing an overclock and you have a 4790K and you have a Z97 ASUS board that does this, which the ROG boards don't, then this is something that you can try out. So there you go, computer's restarting. I think it determined that there was some instability at 4.8. So it's probably gonna lock it in, I believe at 4.7, which it'll tell me when it gets there. That's pretty common for uh, 4790K from what I've been seeing. They, uh, they're not amazing overclockers. However, they run very, very cool. But as I said, at 4.4, I was already getting amazing performance. So if I can go to 4.7 and stay stable at that, hey, 
free performance is good performance and considering that I didn't have to do anything except for click one button, you can't complain about that. All right, so it ran through the, uh, the TPU. Didn't have any problems there. I think we are locked in at 4.7, so now it's gonna run through the Fan Expert, so let it do its thing there. Uh, and then once it goes through Fan Expert, then you can actually go through and independently name each one of your fans if you want to, so you know where they're at. I've actually done this before. I ran Fan Expert when I first set up the computer uh, because uh, I just like to keep things super, super quiet. And this system runs incredibly cool, so keeping all the fans at a very low RPM is not a problem. As a matter of fact, the uh, PPC fan, that's one of the two front fans, almost never fires. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever seen it go off except for when I'm doing these kind of tests. And then the uh, airflow fan on the bottom uh, stays on pretty consistently, just keeping things moving as does the one in the back. Uh, I'd like to have that airflow front to back over the Noctua NHD 15. And then the, uh, the top fans almost never spin up. I can see them through the case. I set stuff up there from time to time and I always just kind of glance in out of curiosity. They will spin up a little bit when I'm doing um, when I'm doing a render. They'll very slowly spin up. The funny thing is, is the fans on the on the CPU cooler, and a few people notice it in videos. Uh, they really just don't spin up very fast. As a matter of fact, with the way they're captured on video, they sometimes look like they're going very slow. So fan experts done. You can hear the fans kind of revving themselves back into their normal routine here. And now it's going to run the EPU, so it's going to change power saving conditions based on your usage. Okay, then here you go. Here's your results of your auto-tuning. So I got a free 11% increase on the processor up to 4.7. And uh, that is with a maximum voltage of 1.375 volts. And you know, normally you would go, whoa, 1.375 volts, holy cow, that's high. Uh, on this particular chip, it can handle it just fine. It's, it's not a big deal because the, uh, the Devil's Canyon chips are much, much better at dissipating heat. So what we'll go ahead and do is now that we know that it's done all of that and it's got all the data there, we'll go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna check my fan expert real quick to make sure that it's still kinda on the profile I want, which it looks like it is. Everything's saved there, so that is good. Okay, so now we have done the auto overclock and the one thing that it says not to do is run Prime 95 because it puts it on adaptive voltage. So Prime 95 throws those extra instructions at the Haswell chips that allows it to overvolt past the limit that ASUS sets. And ASUS set a really high limit because I did that maximum uh, overclock. So let's go ahead and run Prime 95. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna go too crazy. I'm just gonna do the uh, in-place large FFTs and see what the system does there. So we're jumping to, looks like uh, 4.6 right now. We're at 1.362 volts. So at 1.362 volts and about 4.6 gigahertz, uh, the system temps on air cooling with the Noctua NHD15 are not bad actually considering. Uh, this is stressing the system way beyond what almost anything you're gonna do is gonna stress the system. Now you can see down here in the maximums, this was running um, the small FFT, which generates a lot of heat. And uh, what was weird about that is on that particular test, the voltage did not go very high in CPU-Z and neither did the core speed. So it just really pissed off the chip. So we'll reset those. And now that we're on the large in place, we'll just kind of keep an eye on things and you know, everything looks to be all right. So no worries there. Uh, had this been a 4770K chip and I was running at this kind of voltage, there's no way these temperatures would be where they're at right now. So let's go ahead and stop the test. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little experiment. I'm going to uh, export something from Premiere, see what it does with that. So see there it went up to 4.7. Now I find that uh, Premiere actually, if something's gonna go wrong, Premiere is the thing that really pisses your computer off the most. So let's see here, it's missing, what is it missing here? All right, I gotta find these. Locate, I moved everything over to a new drive, so now I've got to tell it, hey, I moved you. You're over here now. That's one of the really nice things about Premiere. If you point it to one of the missing files, it usually finds the rest if they're sensibly placed, if you just moved a large chunk of things. So that's always good. All right, so here is the uh, TU Vlog 12 video. And as I was saying, if something's gonna go wrong when you do an overclock, I find Premiere's the thing that catches it more than anything. Premiere really gets worked up about instable overclocks. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll export the media. And I've dropped my screen resolution a little bit so I can record. 
So everything's a little bit off. So let's just jump to my YouTube preset and we'll dump it to, I'll just dump it back in the same directory again. It's just this weird 00050 file name and uh, resize. And we'll go ahead and export. Let's uh, take a look at real temp. Real temp's not even breaking a sweat. Look at that. All right, there it goes. There it goes. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and bet. Yep. Yeah, you know, the voltage is just a little over 1.3. And uh, again, it's, it's not pegging itself all the way up at the 4.7. So it may not have taken all of the cores to 4.7. But uh, looking at temps, the system's definitely warm. And for the first time, the uh, industrial PPC fan is actually kicking in and uh, doing its thing. So looking at the estimated time remaining, this doesn't look like it really made a huge difference to me as far as uh, you know how long this is gonna take. So I'm gonna break the convention of owning a K-series chip and I'm probably just gonna reset everything back to stock. I'm, I was fine with it at four to 4.4 with the turbo. Uh, there was no problems there for, for my system and it actually ran really, really well. And it ran extremely cool. The fans are kicking on way more than they did at the uh, stock voltage. And the nice thing, the nice but weird thing about the 4790K is the 4790 is clocked considerably lower than the 4790K. So buying the K chip and not overclocking it isn't as insane as it used to be. Uh, people would buy the 4770K and then not overclock and I'd kind of be like, well, why'd you spend the extra 10 or 15 bucks or whatever the difference was? But 4790K, even if you're gonna run it stock, I think it's worth going for the K series chip because you do get that extra boost. You, I mean, 4.4 turbo at stock is really nice. So I'm gonna roll this back because even though it's perfectly stable, temperatures are well within an acceptable range. I mean, looking at it right now, uh, let me reset again, because I've been running this. Uh, you know, my maxes are in the mid 70s, probably upper 70s when it peaks. Yeah, there you go, 78, 80. All right, so we hit 80 on core two. It looks like core two is my hot core on this chip. Uh, we're core one and four are, you know, just fine. For an extra 200 megahertz, the amount of extra noise this is generating, it's just not worth it for me. So it's a fun test to do. The auto overclock worked and, you know, it worked fairly well in my opinion if you're just looking for a quick and dirty overclock. But uh, like I said, I'm gonna roll it back, go back to my nice quiet 4.4 gigahertz and finish up with the benchmarks here on the, this AMD machine. I'm almost done so I can move over to the Intel start overclocking that. It's just overclocking all over the place. Except that one, I gotta do the long way. As always, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitter, over at Tech Uploaded. And I'm on Facebook, under Tech Uploaded. And I'm at uh, 70 some likes on that page at this point-ish uh, as of recording this video. And if I hit 100, a little message that says, hit your next milestone, hit 100, that goes away. And that's bothering me because I want to know what comes after it. Does it just go away or does some other annoying message come out? Knowing Facebook, it probably does, but help me figure that out by getting me up to 100 on that. And then finally, if you have a question or a comment or something you definitely want me to see, the best way to do that is hit me up at techuploaded at gmail.com. That's parched. almost lost my voice for the closing. You know the drill. Don't be a stranger. Check back soon.